time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. We got a newcomer on the 2023 49ers roster countdown. Coming in at number 60, defensive back Miles Hartsfield. Um, coming over from the Carolina Panthers, and this is kind of a hand-picked fit of the new defensive coordinator. Um, Wilkes worked with them the past three years, and Miles Hartsfield, he brings a very interesting story, quite the journey, but if you just look at what he brings on the field, hyper-athleticism. You know, he ran a 4 3 9 40 at his pro day, and I argue he might be the fastest defensive back the 49ers have. He's definitely in contention. He's only 25 years old. He'll be 26 in August. But he's young enough. The speed is there. He's got all those things, the hyper-athleticism, and the most experience playing in this new system, um, which for the defensive back is probably going to be the biggest change. I think the front seven will stay relatively the same. But for the defensive back, Miles Hartsfield's got a bit of an edge because he's got the experience. Now, I want to say thank you to Josh, the 49ers guru, uh, who just crushed it uh, with the research on this episode. Now, Miles Hartsfield's going to be wearing number 38. Was D'Amador Lenore's number? He changed numbers. That opens up 38. Now, Miles Hartsfield's pro day was canceled due to COVID. Um, so the numbers are interesting, but we've got them at 5'11", 210. Absolutely perfect. Now, Six foot two hundred pounds is what the Niners want with all their defensive backs. But if you can get ten extra pounds of muscle um, in there and not give up speed, as I said, probably the fastest defensive back with a little bit extra weight. That that's best case scenario. Now we don't have things like the three cone. We don't have the ten yard, but we do have a thirty eight and a half inch vertical. Which this guy is a jumper extraordinaire triple jump long jump we'll get into what he was able to do at the high school and college level this dude was an sec track and field athlete and it shows on tape um the athleticism's there i mean he is explosive lower body now the question then turns to is he a track guy who happens to play football or is he a football guy who happens to play track i think with him it's a little bit of a 50 50 um, he's that damn good at track that he 100% could have made this his entire career, but he's a football player. Uh, <laughs> he loves contact. He loves energy. He loves the game and that shows on tape. Now he grew up in Parlin, New Jersey. He graduated from Starville war Memorial high school. Now he eventually found his way to Ole Miss and the sec, but the journey that he took to get there was a mess. And so first, let's talk about his high school kind of accolades. Listen to these these times and marks for jumping. High jump, six foot six. He cleared six six. Um, long jump, 23 three. That's awesome. And a triple jump of a 50 foot, one and a half inch. That's off the charts. Wow. Um, so good. He jumped at, you know, the SEC level and Ole Miss as well. Um, was the News Tribune Boys Track and Field Athlete of the Year. I, I found this quote for him in the paper. Quote, I compete in anything I do. Me and my sister could be running to the car to see who gets the front seat. If I'm in second, I know i got to dig deeper. i got to try harder. So that competition mentality is always there. And the pedigree. His sister, Amari, who we just referenced, she was a standout sprinter at high school, um, Sarville as well, and she went – and competed at North Carolina Central College as a sprinter. I mean, this is a fast, fast family. There's no doubt about it. Now, he initially committed to play at Penn State, but his scholarship was revoked. Um, Sarville football team suspended their entire year due to a hazing scandal. Now, the inner details of this, I couldn't find. I don't know what Miles' role was in this. Don't know. Just honestly cannot just honestly say can't find it but he was the captain of the team i'm sure take that for what you will now penn state you know a lot of this has to do with micah parsons because when micah parsons was at penn state he went through and you can read all the details on this and they're horrifying literally holding knives to people's you know necks uh, the sexual exploitation of fellow teammates. Micah Parsons, the things he did there were horrible, which is a big reason why I always said Micah Parsons not on the 49ers, 
you know, draft board, there's no way he's got to be a Dallas Cowboy or he's got to be, you know, Bill Belichick or Andy Reid. Like, there was no doubt about it. And sure enough, that's where he landed. But with Penn State going through all the backlash from Micah Parsons' ordeal, it makes sense why they would pull this scholarship. And again, I am operating under the context. I don't know the details. Um, and so that's something we just have to leave at bay. Now, because Miles Hartsfield committed to Penn State so early, he kind of shunned off a lot of programs because he was going to do track and football for Penn State as a two-sport athlete, loses that. Then COVID takes place and all that stuff. So his he had to enroll after his senior year in a prep school, East Coast Prep, for a post-grad year. Um, and during that time, he was able to play football there. Then everything kind of calmed down. And he was the number one prep school safety by 247 Sports, and he had a lot of offers. So one year off, then UCLA offered, then Boston College. Eventually, he chose Ole Miss, goes down to the SEC, showed up, belonged right away. 2016 freshman All-American third team, 2016 freshman All-SEC, was fifth on the team in tackles as a freshman, and it just got better and better and better from there. I, he belonged, and, you know, it's weird because he fits the old Miss model of this hyper athletic raw type player that the SEC is just peppered with guys like this. So he doesn't get drafted, um, is an undrafted free agent, goes to the Carolina Panthers in 2020. Now, the funny thing is they moved him to running back in training camp as a rookie. This is the type of athlete he is. I mean, he is a freak. Again, you're talking six foot, 210 pounds, runs a 4'3". These guys don't grow on trees. Now, the running back thing didn't hold, moved him back to safety, played some corner, played some nickel, lots of special teams in his three years with the Panthers. But, you know, in probably my favorite stat, his first career sack was against Tom Brady, which is pretty cool. Now, he started 19 games over three years, really just over two years. He didn't have any starts his first year, just kind of got some backup snaps, 140 defensive snaps as a rookie, but played in 41 games. So in 2021, he got nine starts, 472 defensive snaps, and in 2022, he got 10 starts, 812 defensive snaps. And you got to understand, like, the Panthers, not a good football team the past three years, not even close. However, the strength of their team is, is defensive back. It's not even close. You're talking Jeremy Chin. You're on J.C. Horn. Uh, I mean, they've got corners galore. This guy still found a way to get 10 starts and 800 snaps. I think it's a testament to the competition doesn't matter to Miles Hartsfield. Like, he believes in himself and thinks he belongs. Now, if you look at his combined career stats over these three years, 115 tackles, awesome, seven seven pass breakups, that's good, two fumble recoveries, one forced fumble, one sack. The glaring omission, no interceptions. He's allowed eight touchdowns in that time. He allows a very high completion percentage. That's not good. 2021, he allowed 76% completion percentage when targeted. 2022, 75%. So when we look at just kind of the film and what he brings, man, he plays so hard. Hard, and he's shot out of cannon all the time. 4-3 speed shows on tape consistently. Good ball skills. Like, he gets his hands on the football and makes the catch point tough, which is weird because there's no interceptions and a really high completion percentage. But the film says, man, he's right there. <laughs> he's right there all the time. Just got to make that little extra. Um, reminds me of a Charvarius Ward light. That's what I said. Like, not as talented a player as Charvarius Ward, but much better athlete. Um, very positive, feeds off others. You can look up on YouTube if you want. Just type in Miles Hart Hartsfeld mic'd up. Um, the Carolina Panthers, this is kind of who he, the personality. They chose him to be a mic'd up candidate for NFL films. And I think it's week three of 2022. It, it's just like a quick 10 minute uh, thing, but it's pretty good. And you can see infectious personality, super positive man feeds off teammates, constantly talking to teammates, not like jawing at the opposing team, just a real positive guy enjoys life, enjoys his time on the field. Really, really like that. And probably one of my favorite things about him um, especially back in college when I was going through his tape, whenever he makes big plays, he does the bar none omega sign. So I was like, yeah, that this dude belongs in the red and gold, which I'm excited about. Now, when Wilkes left the Panthers, 
the Panthers decided not to pick up his contract, which he was a restricted free agent, could have got him on the cheap. They chose to go in a different way. They wanted to move on. This is a Wilkes guy, 100%. The 49ers tell him, hey, we want you. We'll give you a one-year deal. He got a one-year, $1 million deal, so not much, but zero guaranteed dollars, which tells me he wants to be here more than the 49ers want him. He chose the 49ers. He wants to be with Wilkes. Zero guaranteed dollars is crazy. Now, you look at what he's accomplished. He's got a career earnings of $3 million, which is nice in three years. That's not bad. So, you know, if he balls out this year, maybe he can get that contract. I think he's trying to go the way that the 49ers have been doing with defensive linemen, guys like Charles Aminihu, Arden Key. You can go on and on and on. He's trying to do that as well. Undrafted free agent hasn't made the huge bucks. We'll see what happens here. Now, how does he make the 53-man roster? We've got him number 60. You know, 53, he's got he's got some spots to climb, but he's got things that nobody else in this 49er secondary has, and that's experience in the system. Steve Wilkes has come in and said, you know, he's going to tweak but embrace. Keep things the same for the most part, but change some things up. I think the place that things will change the most for the 49ers, it's going to be in that defensive backs room. So you can look all the way through this. He has three years experience. Nobody else in this roster has any on the back end. So that's huge. So he's got to step up there. Another area he's got to step up on, guys, special teams. He has 470 career special team snaps in the NFL. Nobody else on this roster can get close to that. Not even close. So he's got areas, athleticism. He might be the most athletic. He's got size. He's got experience. He's got special teams. It's going to be pretty damn hard to beat him out for that sixth cornerback spot, which I think is where he's going to play. Um, so, you know, if we're looking at the cornerback depth chart, Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore, Isaiah Oliver, I think those are your three starters. Samuel Womack's not going anywhere, especially because special teams ace, and he can play all three corner spots. Daryl Luter, he's the highest drafted defensive back most recently by Steve Wilkes. Then it's these four to five guys, Ambry Thomas, Quantrez Knight, Miles Hartsfield, Deshaun Jameson, Trey Swelling. Those guys are fighting it out. It's murderer's row. One of them might make the roster. One of them might make the practice squad. But we're going to have to see what happens. You know, physicality, athleticism, experience, special teams, all in favor of Miles Hartsfield. So it definitely would not be shocked at all if he beats out that list of players I just named fighting for that last number six corner spot. But I'm excited, and I think the 49ers got better when they signed him, and whether he makes the 53 or he's on the practice squad and gets elevated, he's going to be a part of this team. I really do believe that. So for us, we're going to keep counting him down, and I'm excited to see what the new 38 can do when he steps on the field.